Hey, co-host. All right, we will uh, call okay. to order. Hello, everybody. Good to see you all. Good to see you, Sarah. Um, let's see, do we have any guests to introduce themselves? Well, we have a new uh, person who's interested named Sean Lopez. Uh, Sean, yeah. can you hear us? You can unmute and talk. Uh, there he comes. And Victoria is also here without a picture. Oh, Sean is somewhere. Can you hear me? Yes. Hi, Sean. Yes. Yeah. Sorry, I, I'm I'm driving home from work, so I'm just gonna. Uh, Quickly introduce myself, and then I'll I'll just mute myself. If that's okay. And listen. So yeah, uh, I just reached out, and uh, thanks for having me as a guest. And um, yeah, I'm uh, in Amherst now permanently. So looking forward to uh, some more community outreach. So uh, yeah, thanks again. Well, great. Thanks for joining us. We're happy to have you. Okay. Um, any other announcements before we get started with hearings? Uh, one other announcement is uh, we tapped the maple trees yesterday and today, so it's spring. <laughs> That's great. I, <clears throat> I know that. Shoshan, I, I missed what you said. Oh, I said it definitely felt like spring today. <laughs> yeah, definitely warmer. And I know the sugar maples are in decline, so it's great that we're able to take advantage of them while, <laughs> while we still got them. <laughs> All right, um, next up we have hearings. Well, hold on, Sarah, we don't have Gordon here, so we need someone to take uh, minutes. Oh, right, thank you. I'll text him, see where he is. Anybody want to be the secretary today? I can take notes. I'm driving and I can't. Oh, better? I can. Okay. Yeah, I can do it. Thanks, yep. Okay. All right. Does everybody have the agenda or would it be helpful if I shared my screen? I think it would be helpful to share the screen. Okay. Okay, um, so if there's no further announcements, uh, we'll move on to hearings. All right, um, so we did have a little flurry of activity of uh, people requesting hearings. Uh, none of them are gonna happen. Well, the new ones probably won't happen for until um, April, but um, possibly March. But we still have the North Commentaries, which we've discussed before which um, I'll be posting for March tree hearing with the Shade Tree Committee. Um, so we'll be planning a site visit before the, the next meeting to look at those trees and they'll be getting advertised in the paper. And it'll be a good opportunity for discussion. Uh, Amherst College has submitted a application to remove uh, two trees on South Pleasant Street. Um, kind of in front of where they just removed that house um, just after Route 9 heading south. Um, 
So uh, they may want to do that in April, the tree hearing. I'm in discussion with them now on what their plans are. They have a lot of proposals to plant a significant number of trees along the stretch of road there. Um, they want to work with the town doing that. Um, it's a uh, umbrella magnolia and a um, Norway maple that they're proposing to remove. Sunset Ave the, is a project that's uh, in the works for Sunset Ave, uh, corner of Fearing Street and Sunset. Um, we don't have a date set yet, but they are, you know, moving forward with the project, which will require the removal of two trees in front, mostly due to a sewer line upgrade that needs to take place. And then uh, on Kellogg Ave, as I've discussed in the last meeting, there was um, there are two oak trees there that I'm going to be taking down. Um, due to their condition. Um, and there's another one um, which has been brought to my attention, which we can discuss later, um, that I may also need to take down. Um, I had an assessment done on it by an independent uh, consultant. Um, and it's up to me now really to kind of look at everything and determine whether or not this tree should remain or it needs to come down. So. I don't want to tie up the hearing process with that yet, because um, if it is truly a risk tree and needs to be removed, then there won't be hearing um, on its removal. So that's it for hearings. All right, so should we schedule that um, hearing before the next meeting now? Yeah, the site visit, we should definitely schedule for folks. Um, so the next uh, shade tree meeting will be March 8th. So, you know, anytime before then where people could meet. The hearing, I should say, the hearing will be at most likely five o'clock on uh, just before the the um, shade tree meeting. So. On the 8th, on March 8th? On March 8th, yeah. Okay. And that'll be a Zoom hearing? My understanding it will be a Zoom. I don't think we'll have in-person meetings yet, so, but who knows. Okay, okay. well, I'm on um, maternity leave still, so my schedule is as flexible as napping. Um, but I'll let everyone else kind of weigh in for what days and times work for them. Can we do um, that same day, March 8th at say 4.30? That's not gonna leave people a lot of time to get back to their Zoom. Uh, or four o'clock. Yes. You know. yeah, yeah. It's easier for me if it's all scheduled in one day, but. Mm -hmm. That works for me. I think I can do that for, yeah. All right, I was having some problems with my speaker there for a second. Um, what's going, are we scheduling something? Yeah, a site visit for the North Common Trees. Um, and we're thinking March 8th at four, which is before the hearing, which would be at five on the same day. What day of the week is that? Tuesday. It's going to be, all that's going to be right before our tree committee meeting. So it'd be site visit, tree hearing, tree committee meeting. Okay, I work till five on Tuesdays. So I will not be able to make it. Yeah, I have a work meeting obligation, so I won't be able to make it either. Mm -hmm. Is there a day during the week that either of you could make a? Um, on Mondays and Fridays, I get out at 3. Uh, on Thursdays, I get out at 3.30. Tuesday and Wednesday, I work till 5. Would the day before work, Monday the 7th? Yeah, that would work. Yeah, that works for me. At what time?
It has to be before dark, but um, what time works for you? Um, at four thirty, five. Would four thirty work to get a little bit more daylight? Yeah, I'm well, like at five o'clock, there's still daylight now. So by then, there'll definitely still be daylight. But yeah, five o'clock. Okay, five o'clock on the 7th of March. That's what we're looking at. Yeah. That works for me. Works for me. Is that, is that for the site visit or the hearing? The site visit will be at five o'clock on Monday, the 7th of March. And then the hearing will be the next day at five o'clock on Tuesday, March 8th. And that's on Zoom at five. So we'll meet at the common on the 7th at 5 p.m. Okay. All right. Alan, you'll post that? Yes. Um, are we ready to move on? Yes. Okay. Uh, so next on the agenda, we have the approval of the January minutes. I'll abstain from this one since I wasn't at that meeting. I just had one change. It's to the final sentence. Um, it said I was, uh, I think, looking to expand the meadow at the museum. It, um, I was looking to expand like program possibilities at the museum, not physically expand the meadow. I think that was in reference with the pollinator um, committee. Oh yeah, that's an important distinction. <laughs> <laughs> so expand program possibilities for the meadow or? Sure, yeah, collaborative. I, I was interested in doing some collaborative, exploring collaborative opportunities for our meadow. Collaborating with Paul, um, Paul and Ada uh, Amherst? Yep. Okay. Thank you. Any other changes or corrections? Right. Does someone want to um, make a, a motion to approve the minutes then? I move, I move to approve the minutes. Second. Great. All right. Um, and then next we have volunteer hours. Um, Henry, you can put me down for two. Well, this meeting alone is two, so no. <laughs> Okay, three. Okay. I was counting it as one. Okay, I probably am up to 10. Bennett? About five. Julian? Four. Okay, Helen? Three. Well, we met some Sunday also, so three. Um, Shoshana? Um, three, I think. Okay. Uh, Gina? I didn't hear that, Gina, sorry. Two. Two. Okay, and Adrian? Two. Two, and did I miss anybody? Okay, and uh, we'll put uh, Victoria, who's on, and um, um, Sean for one each. So, okay, good. I'll mark that on the list. And all right. Um, next, we've got committee reports. Um, my chair report is pretty brief. I'm kind of getting back up to speed, uh, looking over 
everything that happened at the meeting last month um, and starting to plan for the spring. Um, one thing that I was thinking of for like kind of uh, divvying up some of these uh, task list items that we have uh, would be to just give ourselves a little internal deadline. Um, in particular, uh, like second Saturday plantings, um, coming up with ideas for that. If we gave ourselves an internal deadline of something like everybody come up with one location for the next meeting, something like that. Um, it's just a way to give ourselves a little bit of accountability and kind of keep the steam rolling on, on some of these topics that kind of get pushed back month to month to month. Um, so that was just one idea I had for kind of making sure that we stay on top of these things and they don't all get kind of back burnered. Um, but I know a lot of people have been kind of taking up their own little projects and I think that's great. So um, wanna keep going with that and then just make sure that we're staying on top of everything else. Um, Henry, do you have anything that you want to add? Um, yeah, I did hear from two other volunteers. Uh... Mickey Kleinman and Shaharamar Moraj, I'm probably not pronouncing it right, but so they may show up at some meetings too, uh, besides the email I got from Sean. Um, and then on April 30th, the Greenfield Tree Committee is doing a, a planting day, you know, for um, Arbor Day. So I heard about that. I'm just letting you guys know, and uh, we'll be doing our plantings before then, but we'll have something then too. Okay. Um, speaking of volunteers, um, I do want to make sure that uh, probably touch base with you, Henry, about any um, volunteers interested in joining the tree committee and making sure we're uh, moving those applications forward um, again before the town so that we can get new members on. Um, yeah, actually, um, I had an interview and I will be coming back on the committee probably approved in April. Great. Um, That's excellent. And there was nobody else. Um, when Andrea dropped off uh, running for a, a seat, there's nobody right now who wants to be a, a member. But as more, some of you are coming due with this year, so um, you can renew or possibly there'll be new people by then. Okay. Right now, there's nobody that's waiting to become a member. So, okay. Yeah. yeah, they're sending me more papers to be um, re reappointed. Great. Okay. Um, anything else, Henry, that you have for chair report that I missed from last month? Okay. Uh, no, I'm good. All right. Um, we'll move on to the tree warden's report. Alan? Hi. Um, yeah, so uh, not a lot going on, obviously, right now. I think most of the things that um, are going to be happening. We're happening in a couple of months. Um, the uh, just an update that the you know the Kellogg Ave uh, sidewalk replacement project is is moving forward. So going to be a full current proposal is a full length of the road, um, well to the corner of uh, where it takes that sharp turn. Um, replacement of those sidewalks, um, and again we are working to you know absolutely minimize the impact of those trees. I think we're going to be very successful. Um, one of the trees, um, the first oak tree, first large pin oak um, off of North Pleasant Street as you turn on to Kellogg Ave on the right hand side, which is right next to the Unitarian Church. Um, there was a um, researcher at UMass who did was doing some uh, uh, studying of the trees on Kellogg with some um, equipment that allows him to, you know, using essentially sound to determine how, how uh, solid the wood is in the tree, like if there's possibly decay or something. And um, one, his, his uh, report he sent out was that there's actually a significant amount of decay in the lower stem of that tree, mostly in the, um, the bottom four feet of the tree, um, <clears throat> the at the root flare, the, tr the tree is you know about sixty six inches in diameter, um, and um, it I found that rather shocking um, that his 
his uh, research had shown pretty clearly where the decay was in the tree. Um, so I don't currently have technology to do similar type of, of um, assessments of decay in trees. And I really wanted to have an independent um, uh, review of that, of that extent of decay. So I hired uh, Urban Forestry Solutions um, out of Pelham, who has a uh, machine called a resistograph. It's Ten or twelve thousand dollar machine that allows you to um, test the wood uh, at you know a specific location in the tree to see where there's sound wood and where there's decay. And he handed back the report and which confirmed what the previous report had said that there is a significant amount of decay in the lower stem of that tree. Um, it's right on the threshold of um, allowable uh, limits of decay to, to sound wood in a tree based on its diameter. Um, so I'm, I'd really like to read through his report and kind of look at the tree overall and see if there's a way I can mitigate that risk by reducing the crown possibly so there's less chance of wind throw up there um, and uh, we're as part of the process to do the sidewalks we're going to peel back all of the asphalt around the tree um, and that'll be an excellent opportunity for me to see you know the roots of the tree we can air spade around the root uh, root flare and possibly determine better um, you know, the extent of decay in the tree as well. So uh, probably not going to really make my decision until we do that, which won't happen until the ground thaws this spring. But, um, you know, it, it, from the average passerby, the tree looks beautiful, it's healthy, doesn't have, you know, any real obvious signs of decay in the crown. Um, it is very large and its branches are very large. It has had some crown reduction done in the past. Um, and uh, um, it would be absolutely be a shame to need to take that tree down at this point, so. Um, it would, it's a, it's a cool tree. I like that tree. Yeah. Yeah. Is this the tree closest to North Pleasant Street? Yes. Yeah. I believe it had mushrooms growing at the base of it. It has Mushroom. mushrooms growing around the base of it every year as does most of the trees. Um, uh, on Kellogg Ave. They all suffer, they all have root decay. Most of the trees that size will have, you know, decay in it. Um, and we have done risk, we have done um, res resistographs on just about all the trees on Kellogg Ave about seven years ago, eight years ago maybe. Um, and it didn't really, it picked up on decay in the trees, but not that extensive decay in that particular tree. Um, which means that decay is advancing rapidly possible. So, um, but I'll, I'll keep you informed as we move forward with that process. Um, we did take down a, a dead, very dead large sugar maple tree on Kennedy Park today. Um, you might hear some people discussing that. Um, it was stone dead and had significant decay in the stem. So there's no, no question on that one. Where was that, Alan? I didn't pick that up. Hendrick Park. Okay. Yeah. There's a couple more uh, dying dead trees on Kendrick Park, mostly maples that we will be removing um, as well. Uh, ones closer towards the north end of the, on the north end of the park. Um, so. uh, tree warden's report. What else? Um, yeah. So you know, as we discuss the tree planting. For the summer, um, we are going to be dipping into the tree fund this year, replacement fund, uh, which is going to require more planning on my part because we have to vote to approve the funds for every purchase. So essentially for every month, um, we'll need to plan a month in advance to vote on at a hearing, um, at, a, at a meeting, not a hearing, excuse me. Um, to spend those funds, uh, and unless we can come up with some other way of doing it, but it seems like the right thing to do would be month by month, 
a vote to spend money, or maybe we could do it for a, this. Maybe we could do like a two month stretch for plantings or something like that. But not sure how the committee feels about that. Any thoughts? I think two months would be fine. Um, I that makes me think we need to plan ahead for our plantings more so than we did at least this previous year where we sometimes didn't know where we were planting, um, you know, until a week before. Right. <laughs> Just a couple of days. Um, because the, the type of tree and the number of trees is all going to be site dependent. Um, so I think two is two months in advance would be fine. Um, and we would just kind of put the pressure on the committee to kind of plan things out ahead a little bit more. Um, I also would be fine with uh, approving a standing balance or um, like expense. If we wanted to say this is the standard expense that we approve for every month's planting. And then if there was something that went above and beyond that, we could approve it specially for that planting. And if, of course, if it was less than our approved balance for the month, then we'd have more money in the account. Um, so if, if that's kind of an easier umbrella way to to capture uh, release of funds, I, I would be fine with that as well. That's an excellent idea. Um, this does bring up the question of, do we try to get a line item into the town budget or do we use our funds? I mean, we can use our funds certainly, but at some point they're not going to last that long. So we need to really figure out how to replenish them. So. Yeah, that's a good point, Henry. Um, maybe we'll have some updates when we get to that line item, um, or it's definitely something to, to keep an eye on uh, as we move forward through this year's planting. Um, does anyone else have opinions about how to approve the committee budget for tree plantings? That sounds smart to me. Well, I can um, I can come up with the amount that um, you know we could probably look at spending per planting, um, and then the committee could vote on those numbers. Okay, and that so that would be standing as a general monthly allowance from the tree committee account for plantings, um, so we wouldn't have to vote on it monthly, but we could go above it if we approved it in a special vote. That sounds like yes. a good. Great, yeah, because I'm I'm thinking about you know the planting um, that we had um, near UMass where we had just so many trees. I forget how many trees we planted that time. Was 22. it twenty two? Yeah. So you know there might be instances where we go above and beyond our usual budget, um, and that could just be a special case that we review independently. All right. Sounds good. So Alan, you'll just give us an estimate of what you think a, a tree planting general amount would be and that we can do a pre-approval? Yes, I'll bring that to the next meeting. Great. Um, is that it for the tree warden report? Yes. Great, thank you. Um, Julian, uh, the treasurer report. Yes, thank you. So basically, I double checked with the town clerk who said that the amount she gave me last time does not reflect the $100 donation, um, to be clear. Now, uh, this month, I believe the $100 donation has been reflected, giving us a total of $26,687.25. Great, thank you. Is it 26,687 and 25 cents? Is that what you said? Uh, 26,687 and 25 cents, yes. Thank you. And um, did we find out who made the donation? Uh, I did not ask, no. Okay, because we should send a thank you, but uh, if we don't know who it is, then we can't do that, so. Right. In my previous experience as the treasurer, um, 
they are not able to, on their account side of things, see who made the donation. That's what the town clerk told me a little while ago. Yeah, good point. Um, so if anybody knows who made it, <laughs> um, I think we have to identify them some other way. Yeah. Well, next month I'll put it in the newsletter. This person, <laughs> the suspect is this benevolent suspect is likely to be a subscriber. <laughs> <laughs> I will put it in the newsletter, though. Yeah, thank you, Bennett. That's great. I like it. Great. Great. Thank you, Julian. Um, so next, we're moving on to our presentations and discussion. Uh, we've touched on a bunch of these topics already, so we'll just, um, you know, move through and make sure we're kind of getting uh, any new information, um, but we don't have to belabor the point if it's something we've already kind of covered. Um, so first we have the North Common and Mary Maple. And this is reflective of our site visit. Um, go ahead. I have a question. Um, the site visit and the tree hearing, um, are those going to be open to the general public, to Amherst residents? And if so, how do we let them know that they're happening? The, um, the site visit generally is not an, you know, it's, it's, a, it's a posted meeting. Um, it's not really there for the general public to come and have a discussion. It's really for you and for the committee and me to have a conversation around the trees. Um, the public hearing is open to the public and people are welcome to come to that hearing um, and, you know, ask questions and give their opinions. How do, uh, how do they find out about it? The tree itself, any tree, according to Master in Law Chapter 7, that the healthy public shade tree is going to be removed, will be posted for two consecutive weeks. So the tree will have a posting on it saying that it's going to be removed and there's a tree hearing where it is and what time it is. Um, it also has to be posted in the paper and in a public place in town. Usually that is uh, town hall. Thank you. And um, I generally post site visits um, on the website. So there's a section for that. And uh, certainly you can come, Adrian. We don't, you know, we don't want 100 people coming, but anyone who sees it on the website is welcome to come, in my opinion. And for uh, the hearing itself on Zoom, I will post um, a thing on the Instagram story reflecting that that hearing is happening. Great. Thank you, Julian. I know um, the committee had discussed previously <clears throat> possibly doing some more, you know, public outreach regarding that. Um, and I'm not sure if anybody's still interested in um, starting sort of the public dialogue around it um, or not. I am, but I'm not quite sure how to do that. So mm -hmm. is there anybody else who'd like to do that with me? This we took this. Um, uh, I think that we discussed um, drafting an op-ed about this, and I volunteered to do that, and I, um, I haven't. Um, so, um, uh, Adrian, let's. Um, it, it, first of all, that's correct, right? That was that was kind of our main. Yeah, I think so. I think we were going to. Yeah. I think Bennett, you and I were going to try to connect to. So we can go over what the plans are. You can kind of get an idea of what's okay. actually happening. Um, That's right. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, okay. So I will set that up. And Adrian, um, uh, we, um, you and Alan and I can have that set up. Is that just a quick meeting, Alan? Is it? Um, would you prefer? Yeah. I mean, we the, could, yeah. Okay. We. I could show you the plans as they are so far. Um, I think the majority of it is kind of set. But they're just making small changes to it essentially at this point yep. um, so we can meet go over the plans and discuss in detail you know why the trees need to be removed and um what we're going to do in their place etc okay I, I will commit to setting that meeting up and adrian i'll loop you in so that the three of us can meet okay thanks bennett okay sure thing and um, Adrian had called me earlier and um, she's concerned about 
not about trying to save that tree. So um, do you want to say anything more about that, Adrian? or? Um, well, I do understand the, the situation. Alan, you've been very clear about it. And I am just, um, I'm concerned about the sort of the fact that the Mary Maple is a sort of social icon in Amherst. And at this time, when we're trying to reestablish a center to our town in the common, that it becomes a kind of icon, not just of our past, but of our future. And um, so that's one of the things that I'm still concerned about, how we would address the social issue and the community issue of this tree, not just, um, you know, it's physical, um, problems that it's got. Mm -hmm. And I would really like to be able to uh, involve a few other people to get more opinions rather than just people saying, oh, I love that tree, but we can't save it. In other words, mm -hmm. um, somewhere along the line, I'm hoping that there could be a more public conversation <laughs> about the, the focus that the Merry Maple has been in our community and how it has drawn us together through the seasons and the decades. And, um, you know, we may need to replace it, but at least mm -hmm. that particular aspect of it, the socio-structural design of the common, rather than just the engineering design of it, should be out in the public a little bit. Yeah, I think um, that's that's sort of, I get that, very similar, you know, feeling from a lot of people I talk to about the tree, um, people that approach me and talk about it, and, you know, that it is, you know, it is a unique, you know, unique thing, right? It's really, it's very Amherst and it really is, you know, a community, you know, drives the community center of the town down, downtown. Um, I, I don't know how to answer that question, you know, you know, it is, <laughs> It is a unique tree. Uh, there aren't very many Norway maples like that around, um, and you can't really replace it. Um, so, you know, how do we how do we have that dialogue around um, the need uh, to essentially say we're you know at, at some point in time in the not too distant future, very close, <laughs> um, the trees going to reach a point where it actually absolutely has to come down because it is structurally unsound. Um, mm -hmm. And there's a high target environment where too many people will gather underneath it. Um, so unless we isolate the tree and keep everybody away from it, um, then um, something needs to be done. It either needs to have its crown drastically reduced so it's much smaller in size, um, Balancing the leaf surface with all the mass of the tree is difficult when a tree is that old and all the leaf surface essentially is at the tips. So there's not a lot to prune back to to keep the tree alive. Um, the, um, the, you know, it wasn't too long ago that the little, Mary, the little maple in front of the merry maple was the merry maple. So we're talking, you know, 10 or 12 years ago, I can't remember how long it was. Um, that used to be the Merry Maple. It's still there, it still has lights wrapped on it. They don't turn them on anymore. But that was the Merry Maple. Um, so it's changed. Um, but I think most people remember, you know, this iconic large tree as the Merry Maple. So it, you know, it would be interesting to have an article that discussed both, you know, I don't want this to be a one-sided conversation, you know, around why the tree needs to come down. Um, it really needs to be, like you said, about the sense of community and what the tree means, and and trying to um, trying to preserve that sense of community. Which that part to me is just just opinion, um, and, and I could be wrong about this. That part, the social the social impact of it, seems to be beyond technically beyond the purview of the tree committee but doesn't mean that we can, like i could imagine us teeing that conversation up and being a uh, you know one of the leading contributors or like finding a way to engage to start that conversation and this you know this um 
and, and op-ed is certainly a way to do that because when it comes to you know there's I, you know you periodically hear people talking about the Mary Maple but when it comes from the, you know from the tree committee and we say you know if, if if we were to write an article that said well you know for for reasons a b and c um this maple you know the maple tree is no longer you know it's it's time for us to have this hard conversation family <laughs> and um and then that the broader end because i is is that i mean because i think that celebration is is really a certainly a host by the tree committee it's is it the bid is that who does that um our uh, um I'm not sure. I'm not sure what organization organizes that thing, but um, it seems like yeah, the the bid slash yeah. chamber in the years past. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you know, it's a combined effort. Um, yeah, you know. So yeah, I would I would be very much in favor of besides an op ed, um, some organization opening it up to a public forum and inviting you know as many people as were concerned to come celebrate the tree and talk about our relationship to it. And if necessary, do some of the grieving about losing it mm. um, and making it a community decision rather than the tree warden's decision. Um, because it sort of belongs to everybody in a way. Mm -hmm. It is a public shade tree. It is. There, there might be some opportunity around our day when we're, we have more of a public presence um, to have something prepared to be able to have some of this conversation or some sort of handout flyer um, or even a separate event Adrian like what you're kind of talking about that that's more focused on the Mary Maple specifically but that the our Arbor Day activities might be an opportunity to kind of start that conversation if um, that fits within the timeline Alan um, and I was also thinking, you know, once we have an op ed that uh, we approve of, um, it might make sense to then do some sort of editing into a smaller synopsis or kind of bite sized post that we could then put on social media or the website that that offers, you know, more outreach around education you know i think it's important to kind of stay away from opinions about the mary maple and and more to offer um facts right about about its condition and what's going on and then to give the space for people to have their own conversations um as opposed to taking a stance necessarily as the tree committee um but there's definitely a, a, an opportunity for doing some outreach on social media and then through our other um programming and arbor day is the the biggest outreach that the tree committee does so that could be included there yeah the, the mary maple is on the new tree tour that ellen and i are working on so even if it dies, it'll still be on the tree tour for, because we're, you know, anyway, so that would be a, that would be a fitting thing to include. Yeah, I don't know the timeline yet for when the, you know, construction is going to begin and everything. I don't, I, you know, it may be after July 1st, for all I know, I don't, I've been told, um, but um, I can get back to you with timelines. I should know that by the tree here. Um, Sarah, if I can interrupt for a second, I just uh, want to introduce Sharia. Is that how I pronounce your name? Uh, yeah. Hi. I'm, I'm sorry I was late. Um, work ran. Work is actually still running, but um, yeah. Um, I I'm new, I guess. I'm just kind of interested in learning about this stuff. I'm a grad student at UMass, um, and uh, I'm just here as the first time because I just I want to learn and. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah. Hello. Nice to to meet you. We're happy to have you. Um, if we could just have all the committee members run through a quick introdu introduction, just so that um, Shayar is uh, introduced to to us and a little bit familiar with uh, how we run things. So I'm Sarah. I'm the um, the chair of the committee. Nice to meet you. I'm Henry. We've corresponded. I'm not officially a member of the committee. I'm the former chair and I was acting chair and I'm coming back on the committee, so. I'm Shoshona. I've been on the committee for a couple of years and I'm getting reappointed. 
Hi, my name is Ellen, and this is my okay. first year on the committee. I'm, I'm so sorry. I, I have someone at my office. Um, uh, <laughs> I'm really sorry. Um, Thanks for stopping by. Thank you. I'll, I'll try to come back in, but I'm, I'm sorry. Yeah, feel free. <laughs> OK. Um, so any anything else on the North Common plans or the Mary Maple before we move on to the next item? All right, um, Adrian, I know you, you asked for help with this, but I, I do just wanna say that um, at the timeline I think is pretty fast approaching. Um, so if we want to have space for a community conversation, um, time is of the essence to, to organize that and get the word out. Um, so uh, if anyone else is, is interested in that sort of outreach, I think we really have to do the push now or very soon so that we have time for that sort of that conversation to happen before um, the tree has to, you know, work is being done on the tree. Um, so not too much longer. All right, next line item, uh, Kendrick Park and the North Pleasant Street Road design. Um, Alan, you touched on this in your uh, report. Um, any other updates? There are no updates. The plan uh, stands, um, no tree impact um, as far as tree removal or anything like that. So. It's really just a road project at this point. Okay. Uh, in that case, we might move it to old items. So it's something that we're kind of keeping our eye on, but it looks like there's um, no more impacted trees. So I think we can retire this to the, the back burner for now. Next, we have Kellogg Ave. Um, again, Alan, you touched on this. Is there anything else um, that you want to say as that project moves forward? Uh, nothing yet. We're um, I just have to make a very tough decision. Um, you know, my current thoughts on uh, the oak tree up by the Unitarian uh, Church is that, you know, it's can stay. Um, but I uh, really won't know till we lift up the asphalt around the tree and see, you know, what the roots look like as well. If um, you're, you're able to figure out the schedule when that's going to happen. It'd be fun if you could alert the committee. I think it'd be really insightful if we got a chance to kind of see, um, you know, what an excavation like that on a tree that scale looks like and using the air spade and that sort of thing. Um, so, you know, when you have that scheduled, uh, if, if it's an appropriate sort of thing that the tree committee could at least come and kind of look, you know, from the the barriers um, or, or have a more arranged kind of site visit. Um, I personally would be interested in seeing that excavation. I think, um, you know, others on our committee would be too. Oh, definitely. Yeah. Um, I have a question about one of the trees on Kellogg. Sure. Um, one of those oak trees um, about halfway down on the other side is chopped off at the top and it doesn't have a lot of life to it, but it's still pretty much alive. Mm -hmm. And I'm wondering, it doesn't seem like that would be a dangerous tree if we kept it, despite the, mm -hmm. how it's disintegrating. Do you know which tree I'm talking about? I know exactly which tree you're talking about. It, uh, it actually failed. So the whole top tree blew out in a windstorm. Um, right. And so uh, could we I leave that tree to have a natural death in the yeah. meantime, since it's not going to fall on anything right now or anything? Well, my thought um, around this is that the tree, you know, we're going to be redoing the sidewalks. And this is an opportunity to kind of remove uh, the whole tree uh, so that we can do sidewalks properly and then try to get a tree planted on the backside uh, on private property there. The back edge of the sidewalk is the edge of the right of way there. Um, so that's um, my thought removing it. I, you know, I thought about leaving it, but you know, the, the opportunity to um, you know, remove all the roots versus trying to grind a stump down in between a new sidewalk and the curb of the road, because um, it does go out into the, the sidewalk, so. Um. All right, uh, next up we have Northampton Road. And no, uh, no updates on that one. They'll start spring, they'll start construction probably in, you know, 
as soon as the frost leaves the ground. Yeah. And Sarah, I, yeah, Bennett, go ahead. Uh, somewhere buried in your um, email, um, because it probably hit uh, around the time you had, you have a lot going on now and you had more going on then, uh, is a draft of the, um, uh, uh, of the report that we would get, the thing that we discussed um, uh, uh, at the end of last year, um, documenting the, for the uh, complete streets uh, thing, documenting how the impact on Northampton Road. So um, I, I don't think it's particularly urgent, but I was also particularly interested in your thoughts on that too. So when, when and if you have a chance to look at that, it's just a two page document, um, let me know. Yes, thank you, Bennett. I have not yep. forgotten, um, and I, I no have worries. it on my agenda for next month. Um, so I can probably we can probably touch base before that. Um, I'll right. I'll get to it, um, and then uh, we definitely have to keep our eye on it for how that project develops, and we can include those updates um, in in subsequent uh, drafts Perfect. or addendums to that. So thank you for for doing Great. that draft. I, I have seen it yep. come through my inbox. Yeah, I totally get it. Thank you. <laughs> Okay, um, next up we've got the library trees. Yeah, so I, um, I found out about a meeting about the library construction project and I was not able to make it. So I'm waiting to hear when the next meeting is. They still don't have a real final plan for the landscaping and what might need to be removed from behind the library, but I'll keep, I'll keep up on that. I did see a plan, I think, Henry, that you sent that had some trees marked out to be removed. Um, the plan was a bit confusing. Um, did anyone, anyone else see that or have any thoughts on that? I did, I did see that. Um, it really wasn't, um, didn't really give the information I think you needed. Um, if we're talking about the same one, the, um, you know, it's not just the footprint of the physical building and what they propose to do for landscaping. It's the actual, you know, they're, they're going to be moving a ton of equipment, demolition equipment. They have to demolish the building first, part of, part of it. Um, and uh, you know, these are going to be big machines. They're going to be swinging all over the place. They're going to be setting up on the ground, um, compacting soil and doing all kinds of things. They're going to be moving. They're going to need to make things flat so they can move equipment around. Um, yeah, so it's sort of the scope of work and uh, developing a, a root zone protection program, you know, for those trees. And I, you know, I, again, this is outside of my area. I don't know anything about it. I'm not responsible for it. I don't know if they have an arborist on staff reviewing their plans or, or how it's going. So um, I don't even know the timeline for it. So. Okay. So there's definitely a lot to find out about um, that project and how it's moving forward if we want to weigh in at all or offer our opinions. Um, yeah, Henry, it's, fairly, it's fairly urgent also, so I, I'll keep up on that. Okay, great, thank you. Is there anyone else who's interested in that? Um, someone was very passionate about the library trees. Does anyone remember? It might have been Andrea. It might have been Andrea. Yes. Okay. It might be worth reaching out to her. I assume she's on the email list. Um, just if she's able to go to the meetings or, or at least garner some information and then be able to share with the tree committee. So we have more available to us. Um, okay. I just realized I've been on mute this for, I don't even know how long. Yeah, I think I... <laughs> No wonder why nobody was responding to me. Um, I'm interested in the library trees too. Oh, great. Yeah, thank you, Shoshana. I think just having more people available, I know schedules are kind of hectic. So if anyone's able to kind of catch those meetings, um, it'd be helpful to have a couple of people who are interested in following up. Okay, so yeah, and also Bennett, um, about the, like when I, I thought I was, not muted earlier i was trying to say that um i added you to that document about that of like all the pictures that i took 
Did you, did that work? I've been on my phone. My computer's still down and out. So I've been doing all this stuff on my phone and my phone isn't as functional as my computer. So did it work? Did I, was I able to get, actually get you in to that document? It's a, that's entirely news to me. Um, it could be that I, it was um, like, as in like, I don't even think that I knew that anything happened on it. Um, but I'll, it could, I'll just have to go back through Google Drive updates and maybe it's buried in there. Like I didn't get a, I didn't get a notification that said anything had changed. So. Okay. Yeah. I, you know I would have I mean? done that, but I don't know. I, my computer should be better next week. So it's at the computer hospital getting okay. fixed. And things will be better. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, Next up, we have the town tree tour. Um, Ellen and I met on Sunday and um, we looked at the trees a little more, found a few other options, not necessarily to put in the official tree tour, but things we can talk about as we're walking past. And then uh, we discovered that the Amherst College trees are all numbered. And Ellen, you were gonna research um, information about them from those numbers. Um, yep, I have an email already composed, um, but I wanted just to check in with Alan first if he knows a contact at Amherst College um, who takes care of the landscaping and trees. Yes, I do. I can send that to you, um, the folks that work in the uh, for the grounds division. Um, I'm, I'm not sure. If, if those are like research tags or if they're just inventory tags because they have a tree inventory, you know, I'm not. Um, they look not like inventory with. tags. Yeah. Yeah, they probably are. Um, I am going to check in archives and special collections, though, in case there's any interesting historical facts about any of the trees or they were planted by an important person or in honor of somebody. So. So it's coming along. I think it's going to be good. Great. Yeah, keep us updated. I'm looking forward to it. OK, next up, we have second Saturday plantings. Um, I think it would be. I think it would be good if everyone could just take it upon themselves to come up with one location that is just an idea, right? It doesn't have to be successful. Um, we're definitely gonna run it all by Alan and he's gonna make the final decision on all these plantings, but I think it would just kind of help um, us plan out our year a little bit more if we had you know, some idea of what our, our plantings are gonna be. Um, does that seem manageable and reasonable for everyone if you just came up with one idea prior to March's meeting about where a tree location, a location for tree plantings? Yes. That's not asking too much. I know everyone's got a ton on their plates and this for this is for everyone. So I'd love, you know, like our, our usual volunteers, you know, anyone who cares about trees and, you know, moves around within Amherst, we would just love to hear any ideas you have of places that could use um, a little love from the shade tree committee. Um, and the more ideas, the better. We don't, you know, expect that all of these locations will get planted. So it would just be good Is to it, have a bucket to pick from. Yeah, Ben. Will this, will this take place just as a discussion or is there some other, I, I actually have a few ideas and um, is it, should I just put them on a map and share with the group or we'll dedicate 30 minutes in our next meeting to discussing all the, you know, kind of, projecting a map or yeah it'd that's, be so much easier if we were in person you know we just pointed a map uh, that, yeah that, kind of like if i'm like you know that place beside the <laughs> bank that's you know, that kind of stuff could go for a while uh yeah i think having a map would be great and we can just put aside time so if you know if we if everyone agrees that march is a reasonable time to do it uh we definitely want to kind of get a jump start on it before we start having plantings um then yeah, I'll just bring up a map during our meeting and we can have people kind okay. of write on. You can use the annotate option in Zoom cool. so people can you know kind of draw in where they're thinking. Um, and then we'll just have it um, all in our notes for that meeting so everyone can kind of refer awesome. back and we can pick from there as we move forward. Um, okay, so 
Um, I'm excited think, that you have a couple in mind already, Bennett. That's great. Um, and if everyone could try to have at least one, um, we'll just make sure we have time in our schedule for going over those ideas um, in March. I also have a few things in mind for that. One question is, are there any more of those basins left downtown for tree plantings um, where trees have died or haven't been planted or are all of those still new trees? There are still a couple. Uh, there's another tree over by uh, Antonio's that I'm going to have to take down. So we'll have another another okay. one there. I think there's two locations currently there. Um, there are um, several that I know of. Are. Okay, that's just an idea. Thanks. This is an aside, but um, starting in April, we will probably be required to meet in person. Um, so in terms of what Bennett, you were saying. Yeah. All right. Um, so a little bit of a tree committee homework for everyone, please come with an idea um, and we'll just, I'll make sure we have time in our schedule to uh, devote um, a little bit of a mapping exercise where we can kind of plan out what, um, what we're thinking for this coming planting season. All right. Next up, Arbor Day prep. This is kind of all encompassing uh, with a bunch of other things, making sure that we're kind of ready. Arbor Day is our biggest community outreach event in the year. Um, so we wanted to have updates to the website so that when we give our website information out that the website has been updated appropriately. Um, we wanted to update our flyers and handouts, tabling display, um, so those things are kind of coming up underneath, uh, which we can talk specifically about them, but this is just kind of a, an umbrella idea to give us a deadline for some of those kind of uh, long-term goals for the, sh the committee and outreach for that. Um, and then Alan, do you have any other updates about Arbor Day? Yeah, so I mean, we still haven't heard, this kind of is gonna be our other bullet item. The, I have not heard back yet. I have. I did leave a message with them from uh, DCR regarding our grants, um, you know, and you know, we I did reach out to somebody to be a, a speaker at, at an Arbor Day event, and, and um, you know, we're kind of getting down to the wire where I really need to commit, have his, you know, for him to come and talk, but I can't do that until we actually get approval <laughs> for the grant if we want to get reimbursed. Um, so. Um, yeah, and then there's a lot of, uh, you know, work around that potential Arbor Day type activity, which is dual purpose, but would also sort of focus on the, um, this large sycamore tree at the Amherst History Museum, you know, and, you know, how, ex how we, um, how we go about promoting Arbor Day to include that tree or not. So if we don't get the grant, then we don't necessarily need to focus on that tree as much um, as part of the match. So. Um, we should probably pick a date or a tentative date for when we're going to celebrate Arbor Day. I think Arbor Day is on a Friday. So maybe Last Friday of April. Yeah, maybe the day after that, that Saturday is when we do the tree tour and do any public events, or we could do it Friday, but even so do Friday. The, the Friday. I'm sorry. Is that the 30th? Saturday's the 30th, yeah. Yeah, we usually have a booth at the farmer's market. Uh, Henry, um, I'm away that weekend. I'm just seeing here. If you're doing the tree tour that, that day. Um, I mean, obviously you can do it without me, but I feel bad that I wouldn't be there. Well, that doesn't have to be the date. It's just okay. sort of our idea that we were working toward was to have it then. Are you away Friday evening or you away the whole weekend? Yeah, that that whole weekend. And so we'll do it a different what weekend. If, what if we use that weekend that we're there at the farmer's market to promote the tree tour for the next weekend? Yeah, 
that, that could work. We probably should get a date. Um, if we're going to have a farmer's market booth, we have to reach out to them and uh, and reserve that. I really enjoyed that last year, and I think, um, you know, a lot of people stop by. I think it's great outreach if we want to do it again. I say that knowing I'm not going to be there to help. Um, yeah, well, I think but... we have it. Every I mean, I, I think we've had it every year that I've known about the tree committee that's how i actually think i first heard of the tree committee even do you want to contact the farmer's market sure yeah i agree that's a, a great outreach opportunity um and it was also a lot of fun so yeah yeah the weather was perfect that day so it was really nice could have dueling tables, you could have one at the farmer's market, and then you could also do something at the Mary Maple um, with a table oh, there to collect collect information, people's stories about the tree, Mary Maple, or something. Yeah, an I mean, oral history project would be fun. Yeah. I'm thinking, is the sustainability festival a thing? Like, does that exist? It hasn't for the past couple of years. I don't know if they're doing it this year. I haven't heard. Okay, um, I think it's a great idea to do something for the Merry Maple then. Um, that's, a, that's a good opportunity. Um, and there's always a pretty decent turnout for the farmer's market. So that's a good outreach um, opportunity and a way to kind of engage the community like we were talking about. All right, um, anything else for Arbor Day? All right, moving on. Uh, new committee members. Um, we touched on this briefly already, Henry. Um, you said there's there's no one, uh, no current applications in. Um, I encourage any of our new volunteers who are sitting in on this meeting, if you're interested, um, you know, submit an application. We would love to have you. Um, and if anyone knows anyone else who's interested in uh, the Shade Tree Committee, uh, we're definitely looking for members, so uh, that'd be great. Next up, we have the tree inventory. I'm giving an update on that. The um, again, I haven't heard whether we've gotten the grant yet or not for that. So, if they don't, if we don't get a grant, um, I did. Give, I gave a presentation uh, last week to the. UMass class, and there was a student there um, who lives in the area, uh, older student who actually might, you know, potentially become an intern for the town. Um, and he would be a good person actually to, to do tree inventory work. Um, so if we don't get the grant, then I may actually have an intern potential, a paid intern potential um, to help with the tree inventory. So. That's great. Um, it's nice that we might have the opportunity to move that project forward, even if we don't get the grant. Um, okay, so we'll just kind of stay updated on that for now. Um, social media update. Uh, Julian, how's it been going? Good. So we've been getting a good amount of traction on the Instagram page. I haven't posted in a while, but um, I will post about the Merry Maple and hopefully get some traction on both folks attending that hearing um, on Zoom and also just maybe foster, we want to foster a community discussion around that. We could also foster sort of an online community discussion where we say, where we present the facts in a post um, and then allow people to drop their concerns in the comment or on a private thread to the committee's Instagram where uh, we can share those questions and comments with you all and respond to that. Great. Yeah, I think keeping it pretty, um, 
relaxed, right? Like not taking too much of a, a stance one way yeah. or another um, and just giving right. people the opportunity to have a discussion about it is the way to go for now. Um, we could link the uh, op-ed to it and just say like, this is the situation with the tree. These are some quotes um, from the tree warden about this situation and health of the tree and then allow people to put their opinions in the chat features. Yeah, I think linking the op-ed is a good idea. Yeah. Um, it, it might also be a good idea to have even a, a standardized post that you can just recycle, um, alerting people to our meetings. Um, something that's just like, don't forget, we have a public meeting, um, you know, Tuesday at 5.30. And that way, even if it's the same one that you kind of recycle or and just update the date or something like that, yep. Um, just because we're trying to get new members. So any way that we can get a little bit of outreach um, and get some more volunteers interested would be great. Perfect. Um, Julian, right. I wonder if, um, I just worry about bad, you know, getting uh, a bad argument going, um, but I wonder if you could use the social media posts to encourage people to share memories and yeah, you know, special things and and um, you know things that Adrian was talking about. Um, Absolutely. My, yeah, I think just not going so much into the fact about why the tree is coming down, and you know, like I mean, hopefully with the op-ed that will help, but um, you know, spin it more positively. At you know, we right. don't we're not here to defend it, but we just right. want to hear your great memories or share photos, right, right, right. all that. Yeah. Yeah. Good idea. Thank you. Yeah, um, Shoshana, I posted today saying we had the meeting, but can you put that on your list to do that every month you post on Facebook that uh, we're having our meetings? Sure. Great. And uh, Shoshana, how otherwise is Facebook going? Um, you know, I post things here and there. I think the last thing I posted, I shared a thing that the UMass Forestry Department had about a work, a free workshop about um, pests on trees that they were doing. Oh, great, um, that we could also, uh, whatever, you know, a sim similar to the, the Instagram, we could put something up for the tree hearing um, on the Facebook as well. Okay. All right. Um, next up, we have the budget line item for getting some funding. No, uh, no update on that. I don't believe it moved forward through the process. I haven't heard back about any of our budget stuff, so. Yeah, I think for any movement to happen, it's gonna have to come through a groundswell of interest. So, you know, letters to the editor, trying to make people aware, you know, the town doesn't provide any money every month or every year to uh, plant new trees. What do you think about that? You know, and try to get some some interest in, in this thing before before it all passed through uh, the town council and the town manager. There's a lot of good information on the annual town report that shows, you know, uh, budgets um, that might be a useful resource. What report? The annual town report is posted hmm. on the town website. Okay. Um, if anyone does end up writing a letter to the editor or anything like that, um, it would be great to link it to our social media accounts um, or have some sort of summary that we can post on the social media accounts as well, just so we get a, a little bit more broadcasting with that. Um, so we can revisit if nobody's volunteering to do that at this time. Um, it might be something for next year's budget if we've already um, aren't getting approved for this year. Is there something notable about this in that are we out of, is Amherst out of step and that we don't have such a line item or do we not even know? So for example, it's a lot easier to write a, a letter that says, 
you know, Northampton, they get blah, blah, blah from, you know, every year for trees. And here in sad Amherst, we don't get anything. Um, you know, is there, I, I have no idea. Um, this is a rhetorical device that makes it easier to make the case. I'm sure yeah, that sure. information is public somewhere. Yeah. I can yeah. say that Northampton definitely has a better tree planting budget than Amherst does. So. Amherst has maybe all the feel we need. Correct. I'm sorry, Henry. I couldn't. I, there are two people talking, so I can. Yeah. yeah. Amherst has no current tree budget, tree planting budget. Correct. If I want to buy trees, it comes out of my operating budget. Uh, I don't have a line item for trees. My operating budget is $170,000 a year to to do everything that we do, um, and it's been pretty much the same for the last 10 years. So it's gone up you know, by about a thousand dollars or so, but we've had, we've been level funded for, you know, 10 years, so. That's so is, that, is that budget including all the employee expenses? That does not include employees expenses. It's okay. what, it, what it means, what it takes, what I have to spend to keep things going and do what we do. Um, right. And the cost of tree care has gone up dramatically in terms of pruning and all that stuff, I think. Yeah, I mean, the cost of buying a tree, uh, when we started the tree planting program, you know, I could get a, an inch and a half, two inch caliper tree for about 80, $89. Uh, they're now, you know, close to $200 for the same tree. Um, so. Seems, I wonder if we'd have more um, luck trying to help your budget as opposed to getting a line item. I know um, I'm on the public art commission for the town too, and we and we have zero budget, as Shoshana <laughs> knows. Um, <laughs> so I mean, I I couldn't believe how much money this committee has when I came on board. It, I know it's all relative, but it, yeah, I mean, I, you know, town prioritizes its budget, um, and again, if I encourage the committee members to look at the town report and see where the money is spent. Um, and that's, you know, the decision that's been made through multiple town managers um, and uh, it's, you know, changing of government and uh, we're, we're at the same place. I'm not saying that we, you know, we're very, very fortunate and the town did invest heavily in replacing equipment and, and things like that. So we are, you know, blessed in many ways, unlike many municipalities, you know, in the western part of the state. But um, Amherst is not like most municipalities in the western part of the state. We're more like an eastern <laughs> community. Um, and uh, I, you know, I see what those communities have, uh, many of them, a similar size. Uh, and we're, you know, we prioritize other areas. And that's, if that's what they want to do, that's what they want to do. So. Right, so like, at least when they're considering the annual town budget, maybe to have some of our committee members talk about increasing funding for uh, Alan's department and what they do there um, for so that Alan can put that into tree planting might be something to consider. I think that's great to do. I think, um, excuse me, we also, a tree line item by a tree line item in the budget would really say something and I think would be important. Separate from yeah. Alan's budget, the rest of Alan's budget. Yeah. I mean, I, you know, I just want to add, you know, the town did fund a lot of money to plant 2000 trees and it did do a lot of tree planting and it, it did a lot of other things too that it benefited the town and the trees. Um, it made our program more efficient, you know, um, but, you know, that was a one time deal that we really, you know, we we're hoping that would lead to a more sustainable tree planting program in the town. So we, we did this big planting to get kind of to make up for those 20 years where we really weren't planting any trees at all. And now we've, we've, we've spent that money and we need to find, you know, a way to continue planting trees um, or it just won't happen. It's more like an op-ed than a letter to the editor, but I only got one in me right now. We got to work on the Mary Maple. Um, that's speaking only for myself. I, um, 
because every point you've made is it's really compelling. Um, um, and and there maybe I don't know maybe I'll I'll I will um, I'll take a stab at an unsigned letter to the editor that either could come from one of us or could come from somebody we know who isn't on the tree committee um, just as a start just to kind of yeah. get that conversation going. I would be willing to work on that as well, and I appreciate um, Alan and everyone else for bringing up that point, which I think was a really good one. I just, I'll just want to add that, you know, I think, you know, I think the committee is, you know, respected in town and, um, you know, the work the committee does, Shade Tree Committee does, the work that the Climate Action Committee is doing, you know, these, you know, it's all connected and, you know, um, there's, you know, publicly stating that the Tree Committee, you know, feels that there should be more tree planting and associated with all those benefits that the, the public shade trees provide. Um, um, this is a good thing. It does, you know, I don't want, I don't feel that uh, you've got a anonymous, anonymous, you know, senders, but. Uh, oh, no, that's meant that I would, yeah. I just, I, I'll write it and then we'll figure out who, who wants to put their name on it. That's all I meant. <laughs> not, okay. not some, uh, not some spooky. <laughs> it could come from the committee. We the undersigned. <laughs> yeah. Happy to draft a letter also um, to Henry's point, having a, you know, a, a well of support um, for this is makes it more likely to pass. So I'm happy to, to write a personal letter as well. Um, I can't guarantee the timeline on that right now for my own schedule, but um, I'll definitely put it on my own personal to-do list to, to write a, a letter of support for that. All right. Uh, next up, we have the tabling display and handouts, um, and then also the website update. Um, and these are two things that we were kind of hoping to have done for the for Arbor Day. Um, yeah, I've got I've got that pamphlet saved in our Google Drive that I could print more of, and working on the display. But are there other things that we would want to have, like from somewhere else that we would want to put on the table like like the, we, sometimes we have like those tree identification books or like you know temporary tattoos of asian longhorn beetles or whatnot where do those come from <laughs> and how do we get more i can get more of those that's not a problem yeah yeah some of that stuff came from the state so alan if you can get it that's great what about the um, display rack, Shoshana? Yeah, I'm working on that. It's totally happening. Um, it, is in, it is in hand. And I volunteered to make a, a big sign for the table so everybody knows who we are. Um, Shoshana, do you have a high res um, file for our logo? Um, I might in my computer, um, but that's still in the computer hospital. So I'll check okay. when I get and or it might be in our Google Drive. I okay. It probably is in our Google Drive too. Okay. But I I'm think gonna, I've, I'll here. send you an email from my um, Google account so you can link me to that. Okay. Thank you. Uh, on the website, um, I'm sorry, I don't have anything to report. Um, I I know that we need to get it done by the end of April. Uh, I will not have any time to work on this before March, but in March, I can work on it with the goal of having it, having copy done by the end of March, which gives us a month to update the site, which is very rough, but um, that's that's what I can offer. Uh, I hope that, hope, that's, <laughs> hope that works. Yeah, I, I appreciate it, Bennett. You've got a lot on your plate. Um, and March sounds good. Um, I wish I could offer more help, but my sure. schedule is hectic. Um, but if you if you feel that you need to outsource or delegate a little bit, um, you know, just just let us know, and we can cool. uh, try to see if there's a way to kind of break pieces of the of that out um, to make the burden, uh, you know, less of a lift for you. I think it's more about reviews than the you know. It's not like a writing a twenty page website. Um, it's more like does this look good? 
what needs to be changed, that kind of stuff. So just, um, yeah. That's, and that's it is, is this the town, it's our page on the town site? Yeah, yeah, yep. yep. It's been talking forever about changing it up and doing something different. And uh, I've had conversations with the town person who manages that stuff for the town and um, uh, yeah, so need, needs to move to action. All right. Um, it, we can decide at our March meeting, but there might be an opportunity to meet anyone who's available and interested in March after our meeting before Arbor Day. Um, yeah. So, you know, after our meeting in March, we can decide the March meeting. If anyone's interested, um, it might be helpful to have a review session. I think it would take up a lot of time in our meeting agenda yeah. if we were to do it, but just having a couple of people who can spend an hour or so, um, and it's Bennett, you can screen share and we can just kind of do a little bit of review as a group. Um, and I, you know, I think it's good to kind of uh, spread out that as well, you know, get, get some different opinions and stuff. Um, so we can decide day if anyone's interested for that at our March meeting on the 8th, but just to put it out there, um, if we're able to meet sometime in March or April to review the website prior to launch, that would be great. Thank you, that's great, I agree. All right, um, and last up, we've got complete streets and state level initiatives. I think that's the line, I think that's what I spoke to earlier. Um, if there's something beyond that, I don't know, but the, the, the two pager impact of uh, complete streets in Northampton Road. Yeah. That's um, what we spoke about earlier. Yeah, we're definitely trying to gather case studies like Northampton Road to kind of bolster our, our, our case for um, complete streets at the state level to include trees more in their legislation. Um, I think if we can have a couple other case studies, you know, there's a lot of work to be done here to really put together um, a compelling argument with uh, different case studies, um, scientific studies, uh, you know, that, that sort of thing to really make a, an argument um, for state level policy change. Um, has yeah. anyone been in touch with our legislators, Henry? I haven't been lately. I was about a month or so ago. I reported that last month. But um, another thing that's been on my mind to do and I haven't done and I promise to do it by our next meeting is to contact the Northampton Tree Committee and maybe other committees, you know, because this is statewide. So we really should get allies in the other tree committees. So I will yes. contact them. Yeah. Great. All right. Um, well, Next up, we've got our old items. So things we're just keeping an eye on. The significant tree ordinance um, is still tabled for now. Um, unless someone else is ready to champion that, I'm gonna, it's on the back burner until I'm got a bit more of a regular schedule. Um, and uh, the Amherst History Museum grant, we are still waiting to hear back whether that grant's been awarded. All right. Um, committee comments. Anyone have anything to say, or that we didn't didn't get to in the the line items for the agenda? I thought of one question. Um, that was when they did the survey for one of the trees on Kellogg Ave next to Unitarian Church. Did, was it considered going further down the street to think about, um, like? what other trees might be in decay, so to speak, um, or might be struggling, or can we tell that without, um, without getting that type of survey? That's a great question. Um, he actually did, he did do a similar test uh, on all the trees on Kellogg Ave, all the big oak trees that line the street. So I have that information. Um, this was the only one you know, that showed decay uh, this extensive, uh, and again, this is only showing decay at the point that they do the test. So, you know, six feet up could be a totally different story, but he's just testing where you generally find decay, you know, in right. large oak trees. So. Thank you. 
And this is a separate item, but um, I was interviewed by the Reminder, which is the new sort of weekly paper in Amherst, and um, it was printed. I didn't see it in the paper, but I contacted them today, and uh, um, I saw the, the online copy. I'll send that around to everybody. So I wasn't, the quotes are not exactly accurate of what I said, but they're reasonably good, so. <laughs> All right, if there's nothing else, we will adjourn the meeting. Thank you, everybody. Uh, thank you. Have a good thank night. You. Yeah, nice job, Sarah. Thanks, Henry. Bye-bye. Yeah.